Hello, I'm Andy Lomas from Goldsmiths and I'm going to be presenting some work that I've been doing together with John McCormack and his Sensi Lab group at Monash University. So first a bit of background. This work started after John invited me to come to Melbourne and spend some time at Sensi Lab last year and we would like to recognise the support of an Australian Research Council grant and a Monash University International Research Visitors Collaborative Seed Fund grant in facilitating this work. We would also like to acknowledge the contribution of Dilpreet Singh, one of the researchers in John's group, who did the initial implementations of a deep neural network predictors that we used. One of the big challenges for evolutionary art is to understand measures of aesthetics but the big question is, can we really formalise or automate human aesthetic evaluation when it appears so subjective? In a recent survey, Johnson et al. looked at many different approaches to formalised aesthetic measures for evolutionary art and design, including approaches from both computational aesthetics and psychology, many of which focus on observable details in the artefact under consideration. However, a model from psychology by Leder and colleagues demonstrates that aesthetic experience extends beyond the observable properties of the object itself, including things like context and the effective state of the viewer, things that are very difficult or even impossible to formalise. Here's a diagram of Leder's model, showing the variety of factors that contribute to an aesthetic judgement and experience. Most of the work in computational aesthetics has focused on the perceptual analysis of objects, but previous experience, context and effective state of the viewer also play important roles. Leder's work seems to suggest that any unified measure of human aesthetic evaluation would be impossible. Some relevant background to the work we're presenting is that I'm a practicing computational artist. Most of my work explores morphogenesis, modelling growth as a process of cellular development, and exploring the range of complex organic forms that can be created through these systems. For this study, we focused on a series of works from around six years ago called Cellular Forms, because it already had a data set, including rankings and categorizations, that we thought would be particularly relevant. The model used for the cellular forms has a genotype of 12 real-valued parameters and can produce quite a wide range of different structures, such as those seen here. One thing we were particularly interested in was working with data from a real artistic system for ecological validity. Another thing we need to mention is Species Explorer. This is software that I've been developing over a number of years and forms a key part of my artistic practice. The software gives an interface that can be used to evaluate the results of a generative system, assigning subjective ratings and categories to images. You can yet then use that data with a number of different methods to choose parameter values for new individuals to generate, including random sampling, genetic algorithms such as mutation and crossbreeding, and machine learning methods that try to predict fitness values at new points in the genotype space and use Monte Carlo sampling to select new parameter values. For these machine learning methods, it simply uses lazy machine learning with k-nearest neighbours. So, our research question is this. Can we use machine learning methods, such as deep learning, to model the aesthetic preference of a human designer? If we can, then we can help automate the search of large design spaces because the computer knows what the designer likes. One intuition is that places in the genotype space where there is a transition from one type of behaviour to another can be particularly aesthetically interesting. You can see this in, in this plot from the aggregation series, one of my earlier works, showing the effects of varying two of the genotype parameters. I think the most interesting forms here are towards the right hand side in the sixth and seventh columns where we get a tipping point where the system goes from quite predictable uniform behaviour on the left hand side into instability on the far right. This method of dense sampling of the space of possibilities and plotting the results worked for the aggregation series where there are typically only two or three parameters to vary but doesn't work well with higher numbers of dimensions such as the 12 parameters in the genotype for the cellular forms. So particular motivations for this work are first can we use dimensionality reduction and deep learning methods to assist artists in understanding complex search spaces 
and use that information to explore new and undiscovered territory. Secondly, one of the main problems that has been identified with interactive genetic algorithms is user fatigue. We think that putting results into categories could be particularly valuable when trying to find transition points from one behaviour to another, but having to categorise hundreds or thousands of samples can be very fatiguing. So, can dimension reduction and deep learning methods assist this process? And finally, can these methods simply provide better predictions than the k-nearest neighbour methods that Species Explorer has been using so far? One of the main reasons we focused on using the original cellular forms is that we had a data set including subjectively assigned aesthetic ranking and stylistic categories that had been created when originally working on the series. The aesthetic ranking scores were from 0 to 10, where each image was assigned a value from 1 to 10, and failure cases, where no form was generated, were given a score of 0. All these rankings were performed manually using Species Explorer as an interface with the data created over several weeks as small populations of forms were generated and ranking data for each generation used to influence the next. Stylistic categories were created at the same time as an experiment to create richer data to help the search for transitions between categories. Each form was assigned to a number of different subjective categories such as animal, balloon, brain and plant. These could be used to customise fitness functions used when generating new individuals allowing things such as expressing the predicted probability that a new point in genotype space would be within a given category. But the process of categorization can also be very fatiguing, particularly as the appearance of categories often only occurs after exploring a system for a while, and going back and manually categorizing hundreds or thousands of individuals could be very time consuming. The first thing we looked at was whether we could use dimension reduction methods to visualise the distribution of both genotype and phenotype space, looking for structure in the data. We looked at three different algorithms to reduce the data to two dimensions, TSNE, UMAP and variational autoencoders. This shows the results we got reducing the 12 genotype dimensions to two using TSNE. The results with UMAP and variational autoencoders were generally similar. As we think you can see, we didn't find any particularly obvious clustering for either the category or score data, apart from a general tendency for the higher score samples, indicated in red, being in the upper left quadrant. We think this reveals that with this data, the genotype space is quite unstructured in relation to aesthetic concerns. These plots show the results we got from the phenotype space. These were based on using a ResNet50 image classifier to generate a 2048 element feature vector for each image, and then using TSNE to reduce from 2048 dimensions to two dimensions and look for clustering. ResNet50 is a convolutional deep neural network originally trained using the 1.2 million images in the ImageNet database. As we think you can see, there are some noticeable structures, but when you look closer, these are mostly failure cases, such as when the image was completely black. One category that does seem to stand out, though, is the balloon case, but all the other categories seem to be largely clustered together. For the score values, there is a general tendency towards higher scores in the upper right quadrant. So, some structure, but not a lot of distinct clustering. Again, the results using UMAP and variational autoencoders for dimension reduction were generally similar. Please see the paper for further details. The next question we looked at was whether deep neural networks could be used to get reliable predictions of the subjectively assigned categories and aesthetic rank for each sample. Again, we looked at doing the predictions based on both the phenotype data using the rendered images of the forms and using the genotype parameters used to generate each form. For testing predictions based on the phenotype image, we again used a ResNet50 network, retraining the final classifier layers of the network with the category and aesthetic ranking values from the cellular forms dataset. The dataset was divided into 1,421 training images and 353 validation images. The results were high levels of predictivity, 
With the ResNet 50 predictions matching 87% of the original category values and having a root mean square error of just 0.716 for the score values. We think this shows a remarkably high level of prediction, particularly when you consider that since the category values and aesthetic scores were subjectively assigned, a perfect prediction is likely to be impossible. The RMS error of 0.716 for the score values mean that the predicted scores were generally within one mark of the actual one given to each individual in the validation set. We next looked at doing similar predictions but based on the 12 parameters in the genotype instead of the rendered phenotype images. For these tests we used the tabular model from the FastAI Deep Neural Net Library using a configuration with two fully connected hidden layers of size 200 and 100. The results were again quite a high level prediction, matching the original category values in 68.3% of cases in the validation set and matching the aesthetic ranking scores with a root mean square error of 1.88. Comparing the results between the predictions from the phenotype and based on the genotype, we can say that we got significantly better results when using the phenotype. This makes sense since the categories and ranking scores were originally assigned by looking at the rendered images of each form. The fast AI tabular model on the genotype also appears to get significantly better predictions than the simple K nearest neighbors algorithm that we had been previously using in Species Explorer. Following these encouraging results, we've been working on integrating deep neural nets into Species Explorer in a number of ways. The first is simply using deep neural networks as an option to replace the previous use of k-nearest neighbours, allowing better estimates of fitness at new points in the genotype space. We have also added the ability to train deep neural networks directly from the Species Explorer UI, including an option to export data from Species Explorer in a convenient form to use in Jupyter Notebooks to experiment with further and export the results back into Species Explorer. There are also a number of new extensions to the system. The first is a panel called the Categorizer. This uses ResNet50 to generate predictions for which category each form should be placed into. The user still has to define the names of the categories and place some initial forms into each category, but ResNet50 can then be used to get predictions for categories for all the remaining images. It displays the results with each item ordered based on the confidence of the prediction, where the confidence is defined as the difference between ResNet50's probability value for the predicted category and the probability value for the highest alternative category. The confidence level is also shown in the colour around each thumbnail, with green meaning high confidence predictions and blue meaning lower confidence ones. The idea is that this can help the user see when the system is making clearly wrong predictions, correct those cases and add them to the training data. The user can also use a simple hotkey to confirm co cat correctly categorised results. The hope is to allow the user to train the system with as few training examples as possible making the process of categorization a lot faster and reducing user fatigue. The next integration is what we're calling a genotype space plot. This shows 2D cross sections through parameter space, showing the predicted categories or rank at different coordinate positions. In this example, the red areas are parameter values predicted to generate category balloon forms, while the light blue region would be a brain and the yellow animal. The black region to the right is where the system is predicted to create failure cases, which render with a black frame instead of a form. The area of mixed colours towards the bottom is a region where the ResNet50 predictions have lower confidence values, indicating a region where more training examples may be useful. As can be seen, this plot shows a number of potential places where it's predicted that a transition between categories may occur. The user can click on the plot to generate a new individual at the selected set of parameter values, such as to generate an individual at a location in a predicted transition zone. In particular, we're hoping that these genotype space plots may be a useful tool to help find places in genotype space where small changes in the genotype may result in changing from one phenotype category to another. The final integration we want to talk about is a system to automate looking for transition points in genotype space from one categorised behaviour to another. The idea is that you start with two individuals in different categories 
and that the system then uses a binary search together with a ResNet 50 classifier to automatically try to find a transition point between the individuals. In this case, the two initial individuals are shown on the left-hand side and are in categories balloon and brain. The system then uses the parameter values halfway between the two parents to generate a new individual, render the form and use ResNet 50 to categorise the result. In this case, the new individual is categorised as another brain-like form. The system proceeds using a binary search to progressively refine the interval where balloon-like forms appear to change into brain-like forms, in this case producing what we think is quite an interesting hybrid structure. Looking at the probability values for the categories, the system is predicting the final structure as being animal-like, but only with a confidence of about 69% while the two original parents had confidence levels of 98 and 99%. So the system appears to have found a hybrid that it is finding quite difficult to categorise. It's obviously quite subjective whether this hybrid has high aesthetic value or not, but is a form that I think is interesting, as I'm often drawn to forms that might elicit feelings of disgust, even though they are completely synthetic. One of the main reasons for using interactive genetic algorithms is that the fitness function is unknown or may not even be well defined because the artist's judgment changes over time. The use of neural networks in this work can be seen as trying to discover whether there is a fitness function that matches the artist's aesthetic evaluations with a useful level of predictivity. If such a function can be found, it could be used in a number of ways such as to use Monte Carlo sampling or to provide a fitness function for conventional evolutionary algorithms. This can allow searching of significantly larger design spaces than IGAs have been able to achieve previously. Creating categories for individuals can be seen as particularly important when trying to find transitions between behaviours, as they allow the concept of a transition zone to be naturally defined, such as places in the genotype space where two different categories have similar probability values from a predictor. There is a lot of scope for trying out different configurations of deep neural networks for genotype space predictions. The choice of a network in this study, with two fully connected hidden layers with 200 and 100 neurons, was simply based on the default values suggested in the FastAI documentation of their tabular model. A hyperparameter search would likely reveal even better results. We would also like to stress how important we think it is to make the process of ranking and categorising data as easy for a creative practitioner as possible to reduce user fatigue. The aim should be to allow the artist to suggest new categories and ways of ranking with as few training examples as are necessary to get good levels of prediction. It should also facilitate experimentation making the process of trying out new ways of ranking and different ways of categorising behaviour as simple as possible. So, in conclusion, using the Cellular Forms dataset, we've been able to get useful levels of prediction of aesthetically driven evaluations using deep neural nets. These have now been integrated in a number of ways into the Species Explorer software, with the expectation of making it significantly easier to divide the results into categories, as well as provide tools to more directly navigate to places in the genotype space where interesting transition behaviour might occur. So far, this is obviously only one test case with one specific user, but we believe that we've been using a real data set with genuine ecological validity, and the methods used to generalise to other systems. So, worthy of future work to see if this approach generalises to other artists and their personal aesthetics. So thank you for your attention and hopefully we've now got some time for questions.